literally quit. They quit. This isn't a thing where we just didn't. See, when I hear the players, and I love all the players, I love Cox, and I love, 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 I love Cox, and I. Oh shit! Congratulations, Green Bay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, good people. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, I, from the I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. I it's said from the park. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know, you know, that that literally does not work. That was you, Dad. you know, I, I have to laugh. I, I honestly have to laugh because the joke is on me. Let me say shout out to everybody out there that has seen me literally melt down. And, you know, this is actually an honor. Philly 500. My, my son, Philly 500, who has been doing YouTube for a long time, having the meltdowns and everything else that he has, um, and the following that he has, that he has literally got the heart and soul of Eagles Nation. I feel actually honored and humbled because I was talking to him last night and he said, you know, the biggest video that he has ever done, the most popular, the one with the most views is literally Mark Holmes melting down and falling out. Yeah, it's been that way. We have been clowned. And at this point, you know what? I'm just going to run with it. I'm just going to go ahead and say, you know what? This is what my Dallas Cowboys did to me. And I want to make sure that I spread it as often as possible. My man, Ron Oliver, who does my beats and stuff, he's done the Oh Shit, It's Over remix. Because, see, I want to keep me reminded over and over and over again so I don't forget how this feels. Because honestly, what always happens to us as Cowboy fans, and you know it, you know it, and I know it, is we have a short memory. We have a short memory, and when things start going good, we forget about the problems that we have. We do. Now, Mike McCarthy has done with what was a bad team, and now all of a sudden you're hearing you know, Des Bryant go through and he went ahead and he pulled the covers off of the Cowboys and Jason Garrett and things like that and some of the business. And now you've got Terrell Owens following up and, you know, talking about, you know, Jason Witten and Jason Garrett and Tony Romo and things like that, where, you know, everybody has an agenda and things. So some of the shine is falling off of the Cowboys. Now, whether you like it or not, the Cowboys probably are making the right decision at the moment. You can be mad. You can try and hold them accountable. But the reality is, is this. Blowing the thing up is not going to necessarily get you. I, I know we've seen the Texans turn it around real quick, getting C.J. Stroud. But C.J. Stroud is only part of the picture. You also have to look at all of the draft picks they got because of getting rid of Deshaun Watson. And I know what you're going to say. Well, let's trade Dak. Dak has no trade clause. And there's no guarantee that you're going to be in a position to get the best quarterback out there. Basically, if you're saying, let's roll the dice and grab a quarterback, the, the best quarterback in the draft, you're going to need to get rid of Micah Parsons, one of the best and dynamic pass rushes and C.D. Lamb and take all those picks and probably this year's 24 pick and package up to move up that far to get that guy. When you talk about what the Bears did to move up one spot one year, what you talk about the Eagles moving up from like the 12th spot to get to the number two, it would take so much and you would have nobody there left to put around them, but be that as it may. Instead of saying, let's do all of that to get a quarterback. How about we do something radical 
And instead of saying, let's spend all that to get a quarterback, how about we take that same effort and use that on getting some linebackers, on getting another offensive lineman, on getting a running back? Because, see, to me, honestly, if you're saying let's just get a quarterback and not address those other problems, because if you do try and get another quarterback, you're not addressing those problems that have been the problems that have plagued this. Let's be 100% real here. Our running game, we've had problems all season long that because we can take care of the teams in our division, we're built to beat them, that don't manifest themselves until you're playing the better teams. You couldn't run the football and you could not stop them the run and even when you look at the numbers of how the Cowboys played against bad teams we bullied them we bullied them played good teams the defense was just bad we couldn't stop them we could not stop the run and that has been a problem that has been going on for a long time with the Dallas Cowboys and until we fix that situation then it doesn't matter who's at quarterback and if you don't have at least a, a capable running game, and we have not rushed, believe it or not, in the last three playoff uh, games for 70 yards. These are the fatal flaws of the team that you can only do so much with. Now, I don't understand when Dan Quinn changed up the defense. We had people that looked like they were lost. Our linebackers, if you want to call them linebackers, literally are going in the wrong gaps and getting sucked in and being useless. Our running game wasn't there. The coaches can only do so much with what they have. And when the things that you have that are working CD and Dak aren't, you got nothing else to really rely on. And it was the house of cards that fell down. So do you go through and wipe the slate clean and know that it's going to be a couple years to try and get this together, especially the way the Cowboys will only build through the draft? Or do you say, we have to do fundamental changes to get a different result? And that's where I'm like, yeah, I, I, I honestly say, had the Cowboys made maybe three moves, three moves, we would not be sitting here talking about our funeral. If a couple of years ago, when Bobby Wagner wanted to come here, we'd sign Bobby Wagner. Bobby Wagner was older. Bobby Wagner knew the defense that Dan Quinn plays. Bobby Wagner has got like th over 300 tackles in the last two years and has stayed 100% healthy. Bobby Wagner is great at stopping the run. That move would have made all the difference in the world in this defense. Let's say the Cowboys, instead of trading a number four for Trey Lance, which was above and beyond what anybody else was offering, what if the Cowboys had offered set for, say, I don't know, Derrick Henry, and that you put a short yardage back back there? You put a guy who can make some yards when nothing's there. I think that move would have definitely made a difference on this offense. It just would have. And what if you'd gotten either another heavy run-stopping defensive lineman? Now, we got Mozzie, we drafted him, and the thing that we unfortunately do too often is we expect our draft picks to come out like Micah Parsons. But that's not necessarily the case. That's more of the exception than the rule. We rely too much on an infusion of talent from the draft to have an immediate impact. And we got none this year. That's not to say that this draft pass might not be really good in the future, that they need some time and seasoning. Um, if Overshone comes back completely healthy, you saw a glimpse of him being a really good linebacker. If Shoemaker is not injured all off season and can actually start really working and getting into it because tight ends generally take a couple of years before they become the better tight ends. 
He should do better. Mozzie Smith, I don't know what the plan is for Mozzie Smith, but, you know, they're having him lose weight. And I, I, I honestly don't know. But, you know, maybe they have some plan and maybe Dan Quinn uh, coming back. And it seems like we're not hearing too much about Dan Quinn having great interviews or teams that are super excited about him being their coach. It would not surprise me if he was back for one more year. And I feel like the defense for them, I don't know that we can judge them completely on everything on the defense. You know, you think about San Francisco that's got a Fred Warner in there. That makes all the difference in the world. You know, we have safeties that are playing linebacker. It's not the recipe to win. (sighs) Ending this this morning, and we've got plenty to talk about. I'm going to watch, and I haven't seen it yet this morning, get up on whether or not bringing back Mike McCarthy was the right move. I'm going to actually say that I, as much as people are going to say I'm an idiot, it was the right move. Because you don't want to take your quarterback and have him go to another system again. This offense did some really good things. If we can put a running game in here and tweak the offensive line, this offense should be able to play with just about anybody. And the same thing on the defense. I think you're closer to getting there than you would be, of course, if we blow it up. Let's listen in, see what we got. Why do you think of the decision by Jerry Jones to bring back Mike McCarthy? You know, Greeny, I'm actually glad that I'm, I'm here today on Friday. Usually yeah. I'm, I'm normally not here. And sometimes you need to... When you have these type of things happen so fast, you're emotional. And I felt emotional when I, when I initially said what I said. But damn it, I feel the same way. Okay, I feel the same way because I'm looking at Mike McCarthy, okay, in his tenure. Okay, four years, three straight years. He's had, what, 12, what, 12 wins? 12 wins. 12 wins, that's great. Congratulations, 12 wins in the regular season. But we know when it comes to the star, It's not about the regular season. It's about postseason. It's about championship. Jerry Jones has sat on his radio show uh, many a times talking about time is running out for him. Time is running out. Mm -hmm. Like, I need to see something, some results, a championship. How is bringing Mike McCarthy getting you closer to a championship right now? Explain that to me, okay? You had Dak having an MVP-type season. You've had a plethora of all pros littered all across this roster. CeeDee Lamb could possibly be the offensive player of the year. And you get bounced out in the wild card round at home where you've been dominant for basically two seasons. Someone explain to me where Mike, bringing back Mike McCarthy bring, gets you closer to a championship. I'll sit back. I wish I had coffee because I would just sip it right Well, Mike now. Tannenbaum is a oh. professor now. He does teach a law class at Columbia. So go ahead. You raised your hand politely. Yeah. Explain it to him. Look, for 11 months of the year, we sit here and we praise and we should organizations like the Pittsburgh Steelers about being st- – Oh, we, oh, we're going to get into them, oh, too. Yeah, we okay. are. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So go ahead. Jerry Jones taking the long view about – a coach who's done great things in the regular season, 36 wins, and got a quarterback to play better than he ever has, Mm -hmm. who could have been the MVP of the entire league. Now, all of a sudden, for two weeks, we want to be emotional and reactionary. That's not how to build a long-term, stable Mm -hmm. program. And when you look at guys like Mike Tomlin and Sean Payton, they have as many championships as Mike McCarthy. And here's something else, guys. If the five of us were running ESPN bet, and we had to set the odds the over-under for wins for the next three years, Greeny, and it was 36. Those would be unbelievably high odds. Right. Point being is Mm -hmm. the replacement, there is no sure thing it's going to be better. I I understand that. Uh, Graziano's going to give us a list in a minute that everyone needs to hear, but I understand that. The point is those of us who are on the other side of your argument are not saying Mike McCarthy is a bad football coach or that he's done a bad job, but that every once in a while you say to yourself, we've gotten from point A to point B. But if our goal is to get to point C, this guy has not demonstrated that he is able to get us there. Maybe someone else, particularly in a year in which someone like Bill Belichick is available, it would be, I think, a breach of your fiduciary responsibility not to at least sub, you know, kick that tire when no one is looking. So, Green, both things could be true. You could keep Mike McCarthy and say it has to get better. 
His clock management is atrocious. It is unacceptable. I would say to him, how are we going to – give me that back. <laughs> how, are we, how are we going to change that? And, 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 and that's why it's really important to – got to bifurcate this. Didn't you can we do that by McCarthy, and you can still look but for improvement. Those didn't, are not didn't, they do that, didn't they do that last year? And the year before. Yeah, they did that last year. That's yeah. the problem. See, we keep bringing up the, the, the word time. Jerry Jones is walking the green mile. He ain't got a lot of time oh, left. Boy. Like, I'm not trying to kill Jerry Jones. Now, don't but listen, kill Jerry, Jones. Jerry no, Jones. Remember, I got, I got to the Ravens right after Art Modell pushed all his chips to the middle of the table because he knew he didn't have much time left, and he knew it was time to win. It's time for Jerry Jones to go, Jerry, I don't like this new patient calm, let's listen to reason Jerry. We need him to be all in. You talk about Mike McCarthy and the fact that he has a Super Bowl ring. The, the, that's great. It's not with the Dallas Cowboys. So he doesn't have any equity there. Right. At this point, you're talking yeah. about he has a championship program, but he doesn't have a championship culture. And that's always been the problem in Dallas. When they get punched in the face, and I said it here a couple of weeks ago, they're front runners. And front runners is about personnel, and it's about, it's about identity. They don't have one. And what happens is they're built to play from the lead. But the playoffs ain't about that. They remind me of like the Phoenix Suns. They're always going to dominate and win when they go against teams that they're better than. But mm -hmm. when they go against teams that have somebody on the other sideline that can beat them, they can't match up. Listen, it should not take them that long to realize that, hey, they're playing a bunch of man beaters on us and they're crossing routes and we're going to have to com communicate. It, doesn't, it shouldn't take to halftime. You should be able to make those adjustments. That's what real good coaches do. And in the playoffs, we've been a part of that. Remember, we went out, we knocked off Phillip Rivers. We knocked off Tom Brady. We knocked off Peyton Manning because our coach can make in-game adjustments. Right. They don't have enough guys that can do that. So it's a culture thing. They got to cultivate that or Jerry Jones ain't going to get what he wants. Gross is going to get in here. And, that, and that's fit. like if you want to make the decision of like this guy, there's, there's something structurally wrong that makes him uh, unable to win us playoffs. They're too games. comfortable. That, then fine. Then you either need to address that with him and, yep. and guarantee that he'll work on changing it, or you need to find somebody who can. But that the second part's tricky. You know how many, you know how many coaches in the history of the league have won more postseason games than Mike McCarthy? Yeah, but we're not we're not nine. Okay, so he's got eleven career postseason wins. But that is more. That list. is more than Bill Walsh. It's more than Jimmy Johnson. It's more than Sean Payton, Tony Dungy, Mike Shanahan. It's it's three more than Mike Tomlin. So my point is this, it's too small a sample size to make your judgment on. If you're Jerry Jones <coughs> and you want to say, I believe in this man and I think that he can make improve, we saw it during the year. They changed what they were doing on offense during mm -hmm. the season, right? So he's willing to adjust. He hasn't shown the ability to do it in playoff games. And if you want to fire somebody based on that, uh, we need to bring in somebody that, we, that, that doesn't get out schemed by Kyle Shanahan but, and Matt LaFleur okay, every year. Fair. But it's sure. also fair to say, I'd rather go with the – 50-plus game sample yeah. size of this guy but, than the four-game sample size give, of this guy. I think that's a reasonable decision mm -hmm. to make if you're Jerry Jones. Give me that record against teams above 500. That's what I want to know because anybody can, when you have more talent sure. than anybody, be able to win that way. They need to figure uh, some things out, I, right? I, and I, he's I already fired the offensive coach. He's probably going to lose his defensive coordinator. What has he showed you that he can be able – to nice. out-coach uh, another good coach with another nice. good quarterback. In the meantime, this is a game that has absolutely everything at stake on both sides. For the Chiefs... All right. It's a debate that there's only one way to find out if it was right or wrong, and that will be we'll be sitting here next year and seeing where it goes. Um, if everything is still the status quo, if we continue to do what we do, let go decent players, um, sign bargain basement free agents, rely on the draft, and believe in our own guys, we're going to get the same results. In order to do, to win, it's not rocket science, guys. It's not. You've got to have top-tier players. And unfortunately, Pro Bowl status and everything else and all pro – has jaded everybody to think that we have the best talent in the world. Sorry, our offensive line is not that good. Not as good as th three all pros? Are you kidding me? This is setting us up for more ridicule. Sorry, you, you want to see a top five offensive line? Look at the Eagles. That's what one looks like. And going through, C.D. Lamb, incredible, incredible season. But then when you drop off, when you drop down a thousand yards to the next guy, not there. And the running game, 
dudes. It's non-existent. And so I don't look at this and say the Cowboys had superior talent. Maybe they did to Green Bay, and they just failed. But you need better talent in positions like linebacker. You can call me a fool or whatever. That's fine. I'm already being laughed at here on YouTube. But you've got to get better. You've got to have better than just our guys. Or we're just going to see the same thing. And we'll point fingers at the coach and the quarterback and all that and not deal with the real issue. And that's Jerry Jones and the front office filling the needs and actually using free agency. All right, good people. Hope you're having a great day. Hope you have a great finally Friday. It's snowing here. And um, I'm going to be doing some more work here at the Redbrook House. And I'll see you soon.